Welcome Jethro's Garage. Hey, today we're going to be talking about uh, a little difference between roller cams and flat tappet cams and, and a few other things. Uh, this video was taken quite a while back and I actually posted it on Facebook, but I did a little bit of editing and everything and I'm going to post it here on YouTube. But uh, I just bought a 351 Windsor out of a later model truck. Uh, 94 95 something like that f-250 and i was tearing it down to build a engine well things have changed i've got a different engine now and you know but anyway this was a video i made about something different uh it's still relevant but you know some things have changed since then i'll get into the building of my 351 windsor maybe in another video so hey i appreciate everything y'all do keep watching like the video please please like the video and if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe i'll keep putting out the content at least two long videos a day i mean a, a week if i can and and a few shorts every day uh thank you figured i'd make a uh, quick facebook video try to show you my new engine or used, uh, new to me, whatever, engine, and a few things I'm gonna do with it and explain cams. Um, first thing, so this is 351 Windsor. This is an intake for a 302. I'm leaving it in the package because, well, you know, I don't need this one. I'm gonna try to get someone to buy it off of I me. Mean, it's a Parker funnel well for a 302. If you know anybody that's interested, if you'll look, so the, the difference in the 302 and the 351, the biggest difference is the deck height. So in other words, how far up the piston can travel to here. So right here, it's nine, I think it's 9.2. And uh, the 302 is 8.5 inches. So that's this deal. So it makes, makes it wider right here where the intake sits. So a 302 intake won't quite fit. I'm gonna move this out of the way. You've probably heard me talking about when I was building my 302 for my Fairlane, I was looking for a um, roller, uh, roller cam ready block. So in other words, they, they have everything built in so I could slap a roller cam in it and it, and it worked. It's, it's not quite as simple as that, but some of the older blocks, you had to buy expensive lifters and a few other things. And I didn't want to go through that trouble. Um, and I'll show you what I mean here in a second. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna grab the camera and pull it over here. So this is what the inside of a roller cam ready block looks like. Um, this is your spider. It holds down these things right here that are called dog bones. If you'll see, let me get this one back on. That dog bone fits on the lifter in a certain way to keep it from turning. So let me pull this, now I'm gonna pull this lifter out. This lifter, see that little wheel on there, little roller? So this lifter rides on the cam. That's why it's called a roller roller cam. This is a roller lifter. It's actually a hydraulic roller lifter. But if you'll look up here and you'll see the, and get it focused, see the flat sides on it. So this, this lifter, you do not want it to turn in there because if it rides on the cam like that, it's scraping it. If it rides like this, it rolls along, it reduces friction. 
but a few things. So let me show you. I, I got a couple of, uh, let me, got a couple of regular um, flat tappet lifters here for you. This side is what rides on the cam for flat tappet cam. So it rides something like this. These are actually designed to turn, spin. Helps with lubricity and oiling, and it also helps with the, uh, uh, how easy it rides across it, of it. So, the roller cam. A roller cam, the reason you would li like to have a roller cam instead of a flat tap cam is they can make these lobes more aggressive. So this right here would be my intake or exhaust valve closed. This is the base circle of the cam. This right here would be fully open. Right here, right in the middle of this would be fully open. If I can have a more aggressive lobe, it's, it's better for me. It's better for, you know, racing, different, different horsepower profiles. I'm not gonna get in and explain that because it'd be a whole lot deeper than this right here. Um, so that's that. Now, another thing to know, this is a hydraulic lifter. The, so the hydraulics in here, or the fact that it'll fill up with oil, and it's got a spring in there, and it keeps my push rod here. My push rod, it acts, it acts similar to a shock absorber. So it'll allow it to go down just a little bit, not a whole lot. You also have solid flat tappet and solid roller lifters that you can use. And they're just what they say. When the, when the push rod sits in there, it, does, it doesn't go down into it. There's no cushioning. It makes for a quieter valve train, um, but you also lose some potential horsepower there. Notice I say potential. Um, what this does, so here we got the other saw here. Um, these are my two, two push rods. One's an intake, one's exhaust. I might have this backwards, but it don't matter. Get what I'm saying. Um, my, my lifters and my dog bone and that spider will be holding down right here in between them right here. So they lift, they lift my uh, rocker arms here. They lift my, they push on my rocker arms here, which in turn pushes down on the valves or, or lets them come back up. And when you do that, it opens or closes the valve and either lets air and fuel in or pushes exhaust or uh, exhaust out. So that's what you got there. Let me go. So next thing I wanna show you, this is the new heads. These heads are Speed Pro or Speed Master. I forget what, Speed Master. Um, Look, they're, they're cheap. They, it wasn't very expensive. Uh, they're made for a um, adjustable rocker arm. Uh, I'll be able to adjust it a little better. Not the best scenario for it, but it's a little better than having pedestal mount rocker arms to a degree. Um, but these are the heads I'm gonna be using on this engine. Um, next thing I was turning. So first of all, the engine looks pretty doggone clean in there for what it was supposed to be. Um, there's no, no significant sludge that I found. Everything looks pretty good. I'm trying to be real careful about not dropping anything down into it. I probably vacuumed it about 50 times. Um, so I'm going to pull these heads off. This is the head. I'm gonna replace them with those. Um, I know I shouldn't reuse my push rods here, but if they fit, I'm thinking about doing it. I'm probably gonna put me a, 
I am going to put a, a more aggressive cam in it. This one, I don't know what they come from the factory. This is a truck motor. So it probably comes from the factory with something with, uh, you know, a whole lot less lift than what I'm going for. I'm looking for six to six and a half or yeah, six and a half. 0.650 of an inch lift at the valve. And this is probably below 500 uh, or below 50, half an inch. Um, but one thing I, I meant to tell you about these, about this right here, I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna use these, old, these lifters and you can. But it wasn't super important to me that this be a roller ready block. <coughs> and the reason why is because these are good for normal driving. Uh, this, this right here, this hold down, this design is good for normal driving, even some aggressive driving. I mean, they, they used this in the 5.0 Mustangs up to 1990. Six ninety seven. I'm not sure. Whenever they got rid of the three hundred two block from about eighty five, um, so they work. You don't hear many horror stories of someone who hasn't, you know, modified it, having problems with these. But when you start spinning this engine, uh, doing you know seven thousand plus ripums RPMs then you start to have issues with that. And what will happen is, what we don't want to happen is this lifter pop up out of the block, out of the block, push this out, and then get on there on that cam and, and spin and start eating your cam up, especially right now. Because cams are about 400 bucks, 500 bucks, maybe more according to what you buy. And they're taking months and months to deliver. So we, we don't want that to happen. But there's my update. I'm going to get busy. I'm going to go ahead and pull these heads off. And I'm going to go ahead and mock up one of them to see what my uh, push rod link looks like. See if I can reuse these old ones. Again, I don't know if I'm going to reuse them. I shouldn't. But I've got to buy a distributor. I've got to buy an intake. I've got to buy a carburetor. And the and none of that does me any good if I don't put a decent cam in here. Um, and that's just the engine. I still have to find a transmission and a decent rear end and get it all together. So I'm trying to get into get this car running before the end of the year on a budget. So y'all take care. Talk to y'all later.